look, the Bills right now are a hot mess. There's no two other ways around it. Last Monday, nine days ago, Sean McDermott was asked, and I know that this is one of those situations where you can't bear your soul and you can't say when you're asked, are you giving any consideration to changing your play call? Or you can't say, you know what, I am, and I have been. And if this guy doesn't get his act together soon, he's going to be out the door. You can't say that. But still, the sound bites out there of no, <laughs> just no. Any consideration? No. And that was the same day that Ken Dorsey was available to the media for 25 minutes. And I've, I've admitted two straight Tuesdays and now on a Wednesday, I watched that whole thing twice. Because, Chris, I was looking for something. Yeah, I was right. looking for something in his eyes, in his face, in his words to tell me he understands that the house is on fire and he's going to go grab an extinguisher. And there was nothing there. It was word salad. It was cliche. It was non-answers. And it's like, where's this thing going? And where it went was Monday Night Football, a game they should have won. After the game, Sean McDermott said he's going to take 24 hours and think about things in response to the question of whether he's doing something drastic. He did something drastic in less than 12 hours. Dorsey is out. Your first reaction. Uh, I, 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 was su- I was surprised. I was. I didn't expect a change like that to come at, at this moment. I did not. You know, just with the history of Sean McDermott, you know, the, the press conference and comments made the week before, I thought they'd kind of stay the course and try to weather the storm. And if there was a change at OC, it'd be something that happened after the season. I did not expect it to happen on a, you know, Tuesday morning after a, a brutal Monday night loss that, you know, certainly the blame could be spread around to everybody in that one head coach, defensive coordinator, you know, offensive coordinator, other players, whatever there. So, yeah, that's where – Special teams coordinator. Exactly, special teams special coordinator. Special teams coordinator. Right, so all of that was, you know, on the Buffalo Bills the other night. So uh, th- that's where it surprised me. Um, but at the same time, too, you know, I think this has been a, a huge talking point in Buffalo. There's disappointment in that offense altogether. There's disappointment in the direction that Josh Allen is headed right now. And we know he's one of the most talented, if not the most talented quarterback in football. And I think when you add that on to, okay, and then our offensive output, which, you know, a lot of people are going to look at and go, wait, they're the seventh offense in football. Yes, but it's not a high-functioning seventh offense in football. It's not surgical. It's not like, oh, they can, they just, they, they're, they can just, you know, put their willpower on other teams and just absolutely smash them with surgical pass game or dominant run game or any of that. It's all about what we said all the time. It's about one guy just making plays all the time. And when you watch them, a lot of the times on film, you sit there and go, yeah, you know, a lot of their offense and yards is him just making plays. It's not like it's delivered to him with a great offensive play and he makes a good decision and makes the right read and the appropriate throw. So I think all of it came to a head and the pressure on the situation, national media, uh, the media there in Buffalo. Uh, I think uh, McDermott had had enough and I think he probably thought it was almost a distraction to the team to, to make that type of move right there. And it's a tough spot to be in. You were five days away as of Tuesday morning from the next train arriving in the form of the New York Jets, a pretty damn good defense that could stymie the Buffalo offense. And now Joe Brady takes over as the new coordinator. Let's hear. I want to gather my thoughts on this a little bit more. Let's hear from Sean McDermott on the decision to fire Ken Dorsey. I'll have some thoughts on the other side. I just felt like it was, it was time for change. Um, you know, we need to be a confident offensive football team and, and, and find consistent production. And, and that's really what it came down to when you're, when you're not producing right that over the course of time, that's, that's what, where's, where's confidence levels thin. And, and, um, and I think that's really, um, you know, the goal here is to, is to find that confidence again, either before or after you get some, get some consistent production. And, um, I think through the better course of, of 10 games, um, that's really where we were. We were, we were, you know, inconsistent, and because of that, not scoring enough points. So, um, you know, that's that's the uh, at this point, that's the goal. We've got to find that confidence. We've got to find that energy. We've got to find that um, consistent level of production. So Josh and I speak daily, uh, and uh, this decision was made by me and me alone. Yeah, Josh Allen, I think 
is going to be affected by this. That's one of the things you have to take into consideration. It was just last week Josh Allen was saying the players need to play better for Ken Dorsey. Everybody knew of the criticism of the offense, and it was being foisted onto Dorsey. And now, the morning after a heartbreaking loss, you find out that you failed your offensive coordinator to the point that he's been fired, and you have to deal with all that. I think Josh is the kind of guy who will take it hard. I agree. And he doesn't he doesn't have the luxury of taking it anywhere. Practice today, practice tomorrow, practice Friday. Get ready for the Jets, the team that beat us in week one and started the Jenga Tower wobbling, a game they should have won easily with Aaron Rodgers exiting after only four snaps with the torn Achilles. So this, to me, I wasn't blown away by it. And it was funny. I had the story ready to publish of Sean McDermott's comments about possibly doing something drastic, give me 24 hours, and just as I'm getting ready to post the damn thing, Pete Demolitis texted, Dorsey's out. It's like, what the hell? Holy crap. Well, that wasn't that wasn't 24 hours. So it does feel rash. And what I was going to say before, Chris, between Leslie Frazier getting that weird soft firing at the scouting combine, remember right, that? Right. Yeah. He's going to take a year off, and he's going to pursue other interests. He's going to spend time with his family. All that bull crap that gets thrown out there when they don't want to say they fired somebody. Right. I felt like he was scapegoated for last year, and now Dorsey's being scapegoated for this year. And when you peel away the two coordinators, the cheese eventually – I'm mixing my metaphors. I don't care. The cheese eventually stands alone. And at some point – and I think this is why McDermott did it. I think McDermott realized if he didn't throw Dorsey overboard now, it only increased the likelihood that McDermott's getting thrown overboard when the season ends. Well, I I mean, listen, he has his reasons. I, I, I think they are justified. I understand that. You know, I mean, there's a lot there that we, we could unpack. Uh, I, I mean, one, uh, the first thing just off of what you said there with McDermott and all that, I would hope there's no rash decision on Sean McDermott. You know, like we've talked about in the past. Yeah, this year's not been great, but damn, Buffalo's as good as they've been in the history of their organization other than four years with Marv Levy in the start of the 90s. They've built something pretty damn special here. They've come to the end of the shelf life of this football team. Have here. they? Have they? Well, how special is it right now? Well, I know, but yeah, they did. They went thirteen and fourteen and three last year. They went, you know, they they well, look at what but doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter. well, they've been really right they've now. been one of the top teams in football. I wouldn't make a decision and go, wait, I'm going to erase, you know, the other five years I saw before this where we were like this and going upwards, and then just erase it all right now. When and we're, you know, just barely on the outside of the AFC playoffs looking in and thinking about I'm going to make a rash decision and fire the head coach who's brought us up to here to this point. Now they got to do some juggling and some readjusting. I get that. But I don't think like, you know, I don't think about Sean McDermott being fired as a possibility yet. I understand there's some things here now to start supporting oh, I do. the conversation. I wouldn't go there. I'm just telling you that. All right. So then, yeah. then you get into the Josh Allen aspect of what you're saying. Yeah, I think he is going to take it hard. There's no doubt about that. He's a guy that you know I know well enough to know he's highly competitive. He expects a lot out of himself. And then he's got great respect for his elders, his coaches. He wants to do well by them. And he, you know, I'm sure he feels like he personally could have been better. And he's let Ken Dorsey down. But like you said, he's got to readjust. And either way, you know, he's not headed in the right direction personally right now as a football player. Now, not all that's because of him. A lot of that is because of Dorsey. A lot of that is because what the things we've talked about in Buffalo, where there's lack of cream of the crop talent there to ever help Josh Allen on both sides of the ball. Right. Even the other guys, you know, other great quarterbacks right now in football have defensive guys who make plays for them all the time. Right. I mean, Patrick Mahomes can go the whole second half against the Dolphins and not score a point and they can still win a game. That doesn't ever happen in Buffalo. That doesn't ever happen. So he's not afforded the luxury of ever being off or anything like that because he is the freaking team. And, you know, because of that, he and maybe a Ken Dorsey not being good enough and maybe not putting the hot poker on his ass just like a Brian Dayball would, you know, he's lost control a little bit. He's lost that line of aggressive and reckless, and he's going over to the reckless side a little too much right now. And then I think when you couple that with the offense and you go, wait, what the hell are they – like every game, and I say this on my podcast a lot, Mike, 
and I know you don't listen and you shouldn't because you have to listen to me enough, but I'm always, my thing with them too is what are they <laughs> trying to accomplish? You know, like what is it? When I watch them on film, I go, you know, I watch other good offensive coordinators. They set things up. They play, play plays through other plays. They set plays up by showing you something. And with Buffalo, I just go, what is it they're trying to accomplish? Oh, it's just put Josh Allen in the shotgun and make magic happen. And they've lost four to the last six games because basically all six teams they've played have gone, we're just going to slow down Allen, and we don't think anything else on the offense can beat us. And I think that's where Sean McDermott finally got to the end of his wits here and was like, wait, you know, yeah, 17 is not doing his best, but damn, there's a lot on him. And it, can, it seems like they're becoming more and more on him instead of it going the other way. And I don't think that was a recipe for success there in Buffalo. Well, and look what happened on Monday night. They shift into the no huddle, and it works. They start running the ball repeatedly Yes, when the game was on the line and right. down 21-15, and yeah. it works. You said this when Dak Prescott suffered that thumb injury that knocked him out for five weeks in 2022. Yeah. Not having Dak Prescott available forced the Cowboys to be more creative offensively the way they aren't with Dak because their attitude is Dak will figure it out. Dak will make something happen. Dak will make a throw. We don't have to do the kinds of things that a Kyle Shanahan does where we do the aggressive, detailed game planning to keep a defense on its heels because we've got a guy in Dak Prescott. That was the attitude that you said the Cowboys had, and yeah. I agreed with you. Yeah. They, they, they rely too much. They get too soft. They don't work as hard as they need to because they just put too much faith in one guy. Right. And look, I don't know. Right now – I'm going to go back to this idea of McDermott being in trouble. They're five and five. Yeah. And before the season, we both sat in our respective seats and said, Patriots fourth place, Bills third place. Right. Now, right now, they're currently second place because the Jets are four and five. But no Either playoffs. Way. No playoffs. I didn't Buffalo say playoffs. Bills. Yeah. They got right. the Chiefs. Yeah. They got the Chiefs, the Eagles, the Cowboys, and the Dolphins as four of their final seven games and they've got five losses and I think seven losses is the maximum you may not even be able to get away with seven losses because there's 11 teams right now at 500 or better in the AFC and they're then they're at 500 they're at the bottom of that cluster of teams they got a lot to do and and so l let me ask you the question this way do you really think going from yeah Ken Dorsey right. to Joe Brady, who was not Bill Walsh when we saw him in Carolina. No, right. Whose whose biggest whose biggest, you know, resume item is L S U and yeah. before that Joe enough Burrow. time with Sean Payton to maybe pick up some stuff from him. Right. Is it really gonna get better? No. Starting this weekend, four days from now, is it going to get better? What's going to ha What's going to change? Well, I, I don't know if it'll get better. Maybe there'll be more of a little bit of a concise plan and just how we want to play a little bit way, you know, a little bit more of a let's play this way just to win the football game instead of like, hey, Josh Allen is awesome and let's just put everything on him and he'll make plays and deliver for us and we'll come out on top. What we're seeing right now is yeah. They they can't play that way. They got to change something up there, and that's where you know maybe he can change Allen and his thought process a little bit, call plays, and give a different message to Allen to make him think about the game a little differently that way, and then tie, tie plays together, right? I mean that's the thing that I always look at at Buffalo, and you know there's Josh Allen in a lot of games. Oh, play action pass and do it all this, and I want to go. Oh, they can't even run the football. Right, let alone they're in the shotgun every time. And you know, like I said, you watch other offenses, and it, it's you could see a plan being set as far as how they're attacking and what they're setting up. Right? You look at Ben Johnson and the Lions. We were talking about them. Or Shanahan is, hey, run to the right, run to the right, run to the right. Oh, then it's the fake run to the right and the reverse. Oh, back to the run to the right. Oh, fake to the run to the right. Big play action pass. Right? Oh, dress it up a little bit. Hey, the run to the right again. Oh, hey, hey, the oh, it's the play action pass. We dressed it up in the new formation, and then we it's that same play action pass off the run to the right, but now it's a different play action pass down the field. There's just none of that in Buffalo. It's stand there in the shotgun, and it's okay, where's Stevon Diggs? And then can he throw a laser to him? And if he can't, who the hell is gonna do anything else out there? I mean, that's kind of how it goes there, and that's where maybe, you know. 
Joe Brady can bring a little semblance of a rhythm and make a defense think about a few other things on the offense rather than let's just contain the bombs from Josh Allen and let's not him scram- let him scramble outside the pocket. And, and after that, then we feel good. And hopefully he can give them another avenue of, of you know, success to, that makes defenses think a little bit. It does feel at times like it's a random play generator. That's what I mean. Build. It's it's dial. It's di- It's like theme. let me. Here's the Rolodex. Is, Ooh, I like that play. Let's spin do a that wheel. One. Right. Exactly. Spin the wheel. Right. Buy a vowel. Yes. And you know, you my, mentioned Stephon Diggs. The other the other thing to to Go to ahead. the whole thing too. I just see like you know I see people out there ranking day balls offense with the Bills to Ken Dorsey's. Right. I've seen that on social media because they're very equal in their ranks. And I would go, yeah, they're not really equal in their ranks. Really, Josh Allen and what they've done, yeah, what? What do you want to say? Go ahead. You could push back on There's me. only one rank that matters. Yes. No, I'm agreeing with yes, you. Yes, right. That's right. bullshit. It is bullshit. Wins and losses, it's, eyeball test. Right. It's a fundamentally exactly. different team without Brian Dayball When Dayball was the offensive coordinator and in big games, Buffalo thrived. With Ken Dorsey as the offensive coordinator in big games, if Josh Allen didn't thrive and just make magic – they didn't thrive at all. I mean, you think about even some of their wins this year and what they did, the Giants game, right? That one. You know, those are going to go down at the end of the game as, oh, yeah, Dorsey won, and look at these stats. You watched the last two drives of the game, of that game. You came in the Monday morning going, Josh, well, did you, Josh Allen, those last two drives, I mean, some of those plays, those throws. It wasn't like, whoa, what a game plan, and this guy was open over the middle, and then this guy was open, and then they threw a screen here, and then it was Josh Allen ran this way and threw the ball that way, and Josh Allen ran this way and threw it the backside of the guy's head perfectly. It's always that you know let alone and even games like Jacksonville Jaguars or some of these other games that we can dive into there's a lot of BS late game stats that yeah they make the end of the year rankings of the rankings look good but in the competitive part of the football game when it was still in the balance the offense disappeared and that's where the context matters in the situation. And there's too many mouth breathers and idiots online right now that are just buying into numbers and ranks. And that's <laughs> that's that shouldn't be. And and see, and 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 look, I got into this sport 50 years ago because of the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And I've had more agony of defeat than thrill of victory over the years. But all that other stuff is window dressing to me. The stats, the analytics, the fantasy football, whether they covered the spread or not, I don't give a shit about any of that. I want to enjoy the game and watch the game and see who wins and see who loses, and then we go on to the next week and we see how the standings fluctuate up and down. I still got the magnet boards in my office from when I was like 12 years old with the little helmet that you, you, you change the standings based upon where they are. I used to do that every week when I was a kid. It's the race for playoff positioning, and it's the race for a Super Bowl win. Are you in that race or are you not? Ten weeks into the season, the Bills are barely hanging on, and they have looked like crap. They had those three straight games against the Raiders, the Commanders, and the Dolphins. That was their high point, 48-20 over the Dolphins. Something happened on the way to London. They lost something. They lost their luggage, and they can't find it. They have been mediocre at best yeah. since coming back. From London. The games they've won have been like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Man, you almost lost that one, right, didn't you? Gi- right. You almost lost to the, the Giants, who, if we had relegation, would be in the XFL right now. <laughs> and you, with the Bucks, you let the Bucks hang around, and they almost, right. you know, if, if Chris Godwin bothers to think that at some point a football is actually going to fall out of the sky on a Hail Mary pass, they might have lost that game too. So I, they, they have looked. Horrible relative to the standard that's been set. That's the problem. When you set a standard and you have high expectations, and this is the team that was the favorite last year, Josh Allen, MVP favorite, Bills, Super Bowl favorite. And I I was mad about that. It's like, why are you putting this pressure on the Bills? What have they done to deserve this pressure? Put it on the Bengals. They were just in the Super Bowl. This year, there isn't the same pressure because I think people were like, what do we got here? Yeah. And what we have after 10 games is a team that is mediocre at best, changing a tire on a moving car, hoping that Joe Brady will do something. You know, so much of what I've been hearing, whether it's Josh Allen, Ken Dorsey, the attitude is we're just going to try harder. We'll get the hell out of here with try harder. Try harder doesn't matter. You got to do something different 
You don't just do the same thing with more gusto. You got to do something different yeah. to change the right. situation you're right. in. Right. I, I think, and, and Mike, I think that's, that's the point. I think that's why McDermott makes the change. Because I think back to what you said since London, this has been one of my themes on my podcast that you don't listen to, is that since that game, Jacksonville showed everybody what to do to defend Josh Allen. And it still was going on on Monday night with the Denver Broncos. If you watch the, these games as of late, ever since the Jacksonville game, really, for the most part, teams go, we can't let them throw 50-yard bombs if we take that away. And then if we just like kind of mush rush them to where we don't give them lanes to run up the middle, all right? And then even our edge guys, even like here, right there, they, the edge guys don't really want to go past Josh Allen because they just wait and go, Wait, no, if Diggs isn't open, nobody else will be open. So let's just make, let's get ready to make a break when he runs to the edge. Look, again, here's another one, right? Everything is about two things. Don't let him throw a bomb. Don't let him run around like crazy. And McDermott has to be going, wait, teams are playing like this and we don't have another answer. We don't have a screen game. We don't have a run game to talk about and any of that. And so there's no other answers. And what has that done? It's put more pressure on Josh Allen to where... Yes, he's been more careless with the football and trying to make things happen and probably let his frustrations get the best of him a little bit. And it's all kind of, you know, snowballing downhill from that facet. And, you know, to let your point is, there's never a, a zig to the zag. There's never any a yin to the yang with them. And I think that's where McDermott looks at it and goes, wait, if I had to defend our offense, damn, I'd feel good about it. I only got to worry about one damn thing. And that's where I think he probably lost his wits and had to make the move. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.